But no matter how far or how wide I roam, I still call Australia home. Hello. My name is Keith Howes and I was featured editor of London's Gay News from 1976 to 1979. Gay News was a little bit of a magnet and people would come and visit, drop in, and that was the style that we liked. And we'd have people like Dennis Altman, the Australian activist. We'd have uh, people like Vito Russo, who came to work actually with a newspaper for a couple of, couple of months. And we also had quite famous people like Peter Allen, who was Australian but was based in, in America. He was uh, a singer and songwriter, most famously, I suppose. His song was I Go to Rio, but also the one that's now known as the Qantas anthem, which is I Still Call Australia Home. I like Peter Allen very much. He was a very perceptive, intelligent, driven, troubled person. P Peter Allen was not out. Peter Allen wanted to be out, so he called himself bi-coastal, which meant that he lived both on the West and the East Coast. It was a joke. I'm bi-coastal. In other words, I'm bisexual, which really meant I'm gay. He had a boyfriend. They had a home together. He hinted to me that uh, they were living together. Interestingly, he said he'd never taken drugs. He never took pills. He didn't believe in them, and that was not the kind of life he wanted. He liked to ski, he liked to sail, he was very, very active, a very, very intelligent person. I, I really enjoyed our, our talk together. He so wanted to be a movie star and couldn't because of his physical appearance. He just wasn't, I suppose, photogenic enough to be a, a, a traditional movie star, and he just was too camp. He, he was too camp in his behaviour. Um, but uh, he was uh, instrumental in a number of really good songs that he composed on his own and with other people. And I think he's left a legacy, uh, a songwriting legacy, if not a performing legacy. And uh, I think, of course, in a few years' time, he might have come out, but of course he then, he then contracted AIDS and, and was one of the people we lost too soon. The other person from Australia that I remember, apart from Dame Edna Everidge, was a young singer called Judy Connelly. I saw her at Aphrodite's nightclub, and it was one of the most poignant, bittersweet memories that I have of my time at Gay News. The reason was that she was obviously a dyke who wanted to be a dyke, and she was forced to sing heterosexual love songs to a heterosexual audience that was really not listening to what she was really wanting to say. This evening that I watched Judy Kennelly at Aphrodite's was very important to me because I wasn't alone. I was actually with someone who would actually be the focal point for my life for so many, many years, both in London and later on in Sydney, and still is very much part of my life, Peter. So I regard that night that we watched Judy Kennelly sing at Aphrodite's and then afterwards interviewed her was a moment in a way a crossing for me from the person that was devotedly married to gay news to someone that actually was a real gay person who had a real gay life. So I always credit Judy with waking me up to who I really was and what my real function was in life. And it was not, I may say, to work seven days a week for a gay newspaper. So I met an Australian with an Australian and have now chalked up 27 years as an Australian. How about that?